This is Bounty, the Atari 8-bit podcast. So here I am, 21 years of age, in New York City, uh, being put up in a junior suite at the Plaza for a week. (laughs) It's all been downhill ever since. This is an interview episode of Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. Andrew Soderberg was a product manager at Atari from 1980 through August 1983. He oversaw projects including the XL line of computers and Day Ray Atari. He was also production manager for several Atari TV commercials, one of which won a Clio Award. He was a member of the team that built the first computer LaserDisc interactive kiosks for use in retail. In this interview, we discuss Tandy Trower, whom I previously interviewed. This interview took place on November 18th, 2015. Let's start before the beginning. Tell me what you were doing before you got hired by Atari, and then how you got that job. Oh, that's a, that's a cool story. Um, I, had a, uh, uh, I had been working at uh, Radio Shack uh, as a store manager selling, uh, of course, everything Radio Shack, but specifically really pushing the TRS-80 systems. And one of my customers, a local businessman, had bought one and um, had uh, um, really liked how I set him up. And and he wanted to get into business selling computers. And so um, um, he actually uh, started a company that I became a a one-third owner in. And we started selling Ataris, started selling CompuColors, and Northstar uh, um, CPM systems. Uh, this was up in Medford, Oregon. And um, did that for about uh, a year and a half. And uh, we were actually uh, beating Apple uh, selling uh, Ataris into, um, uh, and, and copy colors into schools up in, in the Medford area in Southern Oregon. Huh. And so, so what was the one of the who things... Was the, who that, was the, before you go on, who was the friend and what was the name of the company? And, and uh, well, The company we started was um, uh, Computer Plus, hmm. and uh, it lasted about three years. It didn't last much longer after I left, but, but every year we'd go to uh, CES, which is really big in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. the Consumer Electronics Show, and um, when uh, one of the things that, that kind of happened before going to this trade show, um, the uh, this guy who I partnered with, and it was a verbal handshake, and he had a silent partner. Um, there, so it was really three of us: him, the silent partner, uh, which happened to be a, a, a retired teacher, uh, and myself. I had sweat equity, and he and she had the money in it. Well, he had other business problems with his other businesses. So he had to bow out basically selling off his third to her and she wasn't willing to honor my handshake agreement. So I was now just an employee. Mm. So, uh, um, I went uh, along with, uh, a coworker of mine down to CES, uh, to see the newest uh, products from Atari and from other companies. And, um, and because we, uh, uh, had been selling really well in Southern Oregon, the, the Atari products, uh, the 800 and the 400 and the cassette drive and the disk drives and that sort of thing. Uh, we got in to see some folks uh, within uh, um, at, uh, Atari corporate uh, at the conference and visiting. And it just so happened that uh, I had spent about an hour talking with Candy Trower, who was a product manager uh, at Atari at the time at the conference and told him what I was doing. And, and he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, we're hiring. Did you know? And I kind of told him my, my backstory and he said, you know, if you're looking for, for something, we're, we're hiring. And, and so we're actually interviewing at the Hilton here in Las Vegas. Hmm. So, um, my buddy and I went, said, what the hell, you know, we, we were not getting what we expected out of, uh, this little retail shop that we, we had, co-started with these guys and so we went and interviewed um and i fortunately had this discussion with candy trower to take as part of my interview uh to say hey there was a position that i might be you know someone might be looking to hire me for 
Um, three weeks later, I got a tougher. So uh, I went to work um, for a time being hired away from this uh, computer retail outfit up in, up in Medford. And uh, fortunately, three months later, uh, my buddy, um, was, I was able to get him an interview with another department, um, and he came to work uh, for Atari in uh, sales training. So I was uh, an assistant product manager working for Candy Trower. Candy Trower uh, later went on to work for Microsoft uh, years later and, and was a right-hand man to, to Bill Gates for many years. Right. I have, I've actually interviewed Candy. Um, the uh, interesting story from him was that he was product manager at Atari of Microsoft Basic for Atari. Yeah. And then he went to Microsoft yeah. and was product manager of Microsoft Basic for Atari. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, so Candy hired me. Um, and, uh, that's, you know, I got my start in corporate America. Uh, and, you know, I, I thought, you know, I spent my career working for Atari. We, I loved it. It was, it was awesome there. Um, I, uh, after working for, um, for Tandy, um, I worked for Brenda Laurel, um, and, and, uh, moved up to being a, a product manager, uh, I was a uh, product manager for um, the uh, um, um, Atari um, uh, 1200 uh, XL mm -hmm. um, and uh, was involved with the 1400 and 1450, which never saw the light of day. Um, one of uh, the other interesting uh, stories, uh, when we announced the 600 XL and 800 XL, the, the, the first units after the 400 and 800, um, we were at a Chicago CES and, um, uh, was at a, a, a dinner party that, that Atari put on and man, back then money just, you know, it just flowed. You know? <laughs> uh, Time Warner put a, you know, spent a lot of money and budgets were big and, and parties were big. And even, even the support engineers had a, had a hospitality room with, huge bowls of, of shrimp on ice. So <laughs> money, money grew up, money did grow on trees back then. Um, but, uh, we were at this, uh, um, uh, dinner that, uh, had been put on, uh, uh, by management to thank all of the employees who had been involved with the projects. And, um, uh, after the dinner, um, and they handed out, I have a set of, uh, gold filled, uh, uh, pen and pencil set with 600 XL, 800 XL, uh, on it. Um, because I was on that team. Um, they said, well, Hey, we've got to introduce these in Europe. Um, you know, can you fly to, uh, uh, Italy day after tomorrow <laughs> to go be on a week long tour to help introduce these products to our offices in Europe. Wow. And the, which was very cool. And, and I was honored to, to do this, but I said, uh, well, number one, I'm a Canadian citizen, and a year ago I lost my green card and haven't gotten around to replace it yet. And <laughs> I, my passport's not current. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, um, within 24 hours, I had um, my old passport uh, FedEx to me, my information about my uh, green card, and somebody at Apple knew a senator. And the senator in, in, in uh, the, not senator, a, a congressman in the state of, of uh, uh, Illinois got me past the immigration front door to get a, uh, a meeting to put a visa stamp on the Canadian passport I had gotten gone down to that morning to uh, get created. So I got a new Canadian passport. Um, at the consulate, which was still doing that back in those days. Uh, and I was on the road 24 hours later um, with equipment in the bottom of the plane and uh, ended up doing a, a week-long tour in, in uh, Rome, in Paris, and ending up in London um, um, to launch the 600 and 800 XLs uh, through Europe. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. 
All right, so a tell, lot of tell fun. me, so tell got, me about that. So you're, you tell me about the that dog and pony show where you're showing off the the computers and. and well, uh, it was it was really um, mostly internal in that we were at Atari's international offices, bringing all of the um, staff there. Uh, so it wasn't any real trade show per se, but it was the equipment where I was actually basically training and introducing the product to all of the sales and marketing staff at the offices in, in, uh, in Rome, in Paris and, and in England. Um, and so it was, it was just, it was a lot of fun, you know? Um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> it really was just meeting and greeting and showing off the product and answering questions and, and being taken out to lunches and dinners. And again, money being just not really an object at the time. Um, so that was, that was, uh, uh, a lot of fun. Um, another thing because of my, um, again, a little bit of history, I was in broadcast television in the seventies and that was one of the things that Tandy Trower when hiring me was interested in because later on, um, I got involved in being, uh, in, in helping with Apple's television commercial production. So they would Apple, send me, I think, I think you mean Atari. I'm sorry. Yes. I apologize. Yes. It's hard. You you said, gotta, I'm Apple, dyslexic like two minutes and, and I did work for <laughs> Apple for three years, 10 years later. So my venue at Atari was from 80 to 83. My venue from Apple was from 90 to 93. So I apologize if I do that, I'm being a little dyslexic. Okay. Um, so, so um, I was involved in Atari's uh, commercial development. They would send me to New York City um, to work on the commercials from a production uh, coordinator point of view of managing and making sure that the computers were being set up and used correctly. So I was the corporate liaison to the production company um, and uh, the... Uh, um, there was a television commercial that ended up winning a Clio that I was involved in, and that was the one uh, regarding uh, a kid learning French so that he could welcome his grandparents. Bonjour, grand-mère, grand-père, uh, when they came to visit from France. So it was uh, a commercial about learning uh, foreign languages uh, using your Atari with uh, the cassette, etc. Atari brings the computer age home. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour. Not quite. Try one more time. Bonjour. Learn a new language or take your best shot at Missile Command. With an Atari 400 home computer, there are a world of possibilities. In fact, it could even change your life. Bonjour, Vermeer. Come here. Comment allez-vous? The Atari 400 home computer. We brought the computer age home. Yeah, so there, and, and so here I am, 21 years of age, in New York City, uh, being put up in a junior suite at the plaza um, for this for a week. <laughs> it's all been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> you got spoiled early. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, got to do a lot of interesting, interesting things with Atari. Um, there was the uh, centipede. Um, uh, uh, competition, which I think was also in Chicago. I may have that wrong, but there was a big, uh, um, we had, we had 200 centipedes from the arcade division, uh, where they were having this national championship. And of course I was there showing off Atari products in the corner, um, with a small setup to be able to, you know, show off the, the home computer division stuff, hmm. um, while they were having this huge, uh, competition, uh, with, with, uh, arcade centipede machine. So that was cool. Um, another project I was involved in was the, um, Eric, uh, electronic retail information center with the laser disc kiosk, hmm. um, uh, in, in, uh, helping, uh, manage that process. I wasn't, I was more of a, um, tracking and, and, you know, uh, project management in the sense of keeping, things on schedule and documenting things on schedule, but, uh, so this the guys was, this in the engineering the, department did all the hard the work. kiosk that would be in a, in a retail establishment. In a, in a Sears, yeah. In a, in a Sears, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sears or awards, uh, where they had, uh, a monitor and a framed cardboard frame and Atari 800 and it would run, uh, automated presentation and you'd be able to, you know, uh, watch videos. There was a laser displayer in the back and, um, 
Yeah, so it helped with, with sales. And, and uh, I used that experience um, uh, with the company I went and joined after uh, Atari fell apart, uh, Vimart, which is an uh, interactive point-of-purchase kiosk system to help sell software at retail that we sold through, uh, that we placed in Sears and uh, Kmart's uh, worldwide, but that's a whole other story. So the, um, those, were those Atari LaserDisc machines actually used in Sears, or was it just more? Yes, they were, yes. Yeah. No, they actually got placed in series. I don't know how many, but I actually was involved in, in seeing them being installed and set up and demonstrated in series, in series stores. So I heard a story in one of my interviews. I don't remember who told me this story right now. And I've been trying to get corroborate, collaboration, cor- corroboration for it. <clears throat> it was uh, one of these, it was on the, the LaserDisc system uh, that hooked up to the computer. It was probably this whole Eric thing. And it was supposed to be demonstrated at Comdex or CES, one of those. And it didn't work yet. And the story I heard was that you were supposed to enter, you know, whatever, a, a number on the Atari, and it was supposed to bring up a, a uh, th- that appropriate segment, that feature on the LaserDisc. And it right. wasn't working right. right. The interface wasn't working. So for the show, there was a guy hidden, on, hidden under the table who would look at what the person entered and then bring up that appropriate frame number on the laser disc and hit play. I can't corroborate that because uh, I wasn't there for that, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. That part, I, 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 so, yeah, that's a, that's a good story, but I, I can't say anything on that because I really don't have any memory about that. Okay. That's <laughs> I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me, <laughs> but... Um, yeah. yeah, it's either apocryphal um, or true, but it just it's it's such a yeah, fascinating yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I had a number of trips uh, to uh, um, to New York uh, for commercials to help with uh, oversight of uh, and and one of the things early on is we were really um, um, pioneering the connection of making sure the video was in sync on the monitor with what was being shot with the camera. So everything was shot in 25 frames per second out to get it to sync up. So we had some really heavy hardware that had been custom done to get it so that, and we'd run the, run the, um, uh, Atari computers in PAL and the cameras, uh, in PAL so that everything would sync up correctly. So we didn't get the vertical Um, screen flipping. Yeah, so there was, there was no screen flipping or rolling or anything. So that was that was an interesting thing that was being pioneered at the time to to get that that everything refresh and sync. Um, but yeah, so I, I uh, uh, was you know was there to, to teach the actors you know how to use the product and and uh, you know and then from the, the the placement how to properly position and place the gear because oftentimes the the set director would want to do something. He said, no, that would not be a real world juice. They would not set things up that way. And so we'd have this, you know, not so much a fight, but a good discussion back and forth about, okay, what's right for the camera versus what's right in reality and finding a compromise to work. So that, that was always fun. Well, it was always um, fun. And I don't know if this happened to you, but like in, in magazine ads and, and, and covers and things, you'd always see Atari's running with no cables going to them. And it, that was always frustrating. Yeah. That sort of yes, thing. that was, yes. Yes, there would always be that. How would we hide the cables? So that's correct. <laughs> Those would be well taped, <laughs> well taped uh, to the sides of the units and around. So yeah, there was there was a lot of that that went on. So this is for um, the, the the we're learning the the French commercial that we were talking about before. Well, the the um, um, yeah for for the yeah there's definitely an example. There was an indoor scene, of, you know, a, a, um, the the living room scene with with the computer and the, and the cassette and, and uh, the TV set and, and it all hooked up. And then later, of course, you know, welcoming the, the grandparents coming in the front door. And, and the th- thing was that we, the shots were, the, these were all done out on, um, they would rent um, mansions or large homes out on Long Island that had all these various rooms that they could choose from. I remember we ended up, we ended up uh, that particular commercial, we spent three or four days on and, all of the, the craft services and everybody getting, you know, eating really well and all the breaks. I'm going, man, I could really enjoy this job. <laughs> 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 this 
this is this is a lot of fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was it was fun to be sent on those trips, and I did I did three or four of them. And then later on, um, I was involved when Alan Alda became uh, Atari's uh, spokesperson, and this was his first commercial endorsement engagement after Mass was over. It was a big deal, big money spent, millions of dollars to get his endorsement. Uh, to, to be our, our spokesperson. I spent two and a half days with Alan Alda, um, showing him the product, teaching him how to use it. And what blew me away was how grounded, how real, how down to earth this guy was. He gave me his fullest attention. This, you know, it was, you know, my first time ever really meeting any type of celebrity of any kind. And it just blew me away. He was there in the moment and focused. There was nothing distracting and nothing. He wanted to make sure he knew exactly what was going on. So, so it was a it, that was a real uh, uh, also highlight moment that I was really lucky to be involved in in spending time with with uh, teaching Alan Alda all about Atari products. That's all. That's awesome. I've I've heard that, and uh, you can tell me if, if this is right. It sounds like it is. That he, I heard that he cared, he really wanted to know how the Atari computers worked. He wasn't just there in the commercials to read the scripts and, and get his paycheck. He yes. really wanted yes. to know what was going on. That's absolutely correct. He really wanted to understand it. He wanted to, he asked a lot of very intelligent questions and it just, you know, it, 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 it was I was in a sense taken aback at how much I had not necessarily misjudged him, but necessarily maybe misjudged what I thought an actor or, or you know, a personality might be, you know, so he was there in the moment and very much asking lots of questions. And yeah, it's absolutely true. He wanted to know how it worked. He wanted to understand what was going on uh, inside and, and uh, uh, how it all worked. And, and yes, we had engineers there that would a- answer those questions for him. So, um, Let's see, other interesting things. Um, uh, Bay Ray Atari, uh, was, uh, Chris Crawford, of course, was the author, but I was I project managed up in getting that thing put together. Really? Um, Tell me about that. And, Were you involved with well, getting it serialized uh, in Byte Magazine? It, um, it, it, no, it was really more of, of making sure it, it, it all came together into the document in the first place. Uh, what happened to it after that, I wasn't involved in any of the uh, production or publishing or that sort of thing, but, but just getting Chris Crawford, and, you know, to pull it all together and getting things organized. And again, really be more of a support person um, than I can't take, you know, any credit for the content. That's all Chris and others. Um, but just, you know, in a, in a, from a product management support role of being sure, okay, we're getting all this collated, getting all the updates, getting all the versioning correct. Um, getting a release, you know, organized into something that can then be turned into something that gets published. Nice. I've um, personally seen three versions of Day Ray Atari, two early versions, and then and then the version that was released by Atari Program Exchange. Um, so you must have had a lot of work there. Yeah, there, there, there was. And that's the thing. Atari Program Exchange was, was uh, also a lot of fun, um, getting, getting people involved in, in uh, you know, building out... Uh, applications for the product and kind of a very, very early evangelism kind of effort. Um, uh, so that, that was, that was always fun going over and talking to him. Right now I'm drawing a blank on the guy who managed that group. Uh, uh, it could I, have been, I don't know if we're talking about Dale Yoakum or if we're talking about, uh, oh. well, I knew Dale, but no, we're, um, we're not talking about Dale. It's another guy who was the, just the, more like my equivalent product project manager type of role and, and Thorland, uh, I, I'm really, yes, Fred Thorland. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's very, very, very fun times. I ended up working for Peter Rosenthal, uh, his VP of marketing mm-hmm. and then, uh, Roger Battisher, uh, of course was, was the president. Uh, at the time, I later went to work for Roger at Mindset years later, mm. uh, uh, and another uh, uh, computer startup with a eighty-one eighty-six processor that ended up going into back into video production. Uh, Mindset ended up being after being a, a failed computer, uh, they turned it into a, a graphics uh, video production uh, titling type tool. 
but yeah, we, we, we would grow and grow, uh, and we just get every year get getting, you know, better. And then all of a sudden, you know, boom, there was the, the fallout, you know, and, and, uh, uh, just kind of went off the cliff at the end there. Um, people bailing left and right and people being laid off left and right. And, um, actually was, uh, um, um, when, when I left, it was on my own volition. Um, I got an offer from a startup when I mentioned earlier, Vinemark. Uh, and, uh, at that time I then was reporting directly to the interim president who now's name I'm also, uh, blanking on. Uh, Peter had left and, and Roger Battisher had left and had somebody else in there. Um, and uh, um, so I, I, I turned in my resignation to uh, the president of the division. Um, but um, other things back, um, I was, you know, the, near the end there, the, the, uh, it was a lot of fun working on the, you know, 1400 uh, XL and the 1450 with the um, dual floppy drives built in and, and uh, there were a few prototypes um, and then also with the modem built in um, and uh, uh, chip and the modem and the yeah yes 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 uh, a 1400 it was, it was fun. recently showed up on eBay and uh, it's wow sold, it sold for a lot of money um, wow like, wow I don't remember 10, 10, 12, yeah, in, in my garage I've, I've got a box where I've still got um, I've still got a, a, a an 800 I've got a, a 800 XL um, and disk drives and so yeah I still still kept a set of set of stuff nice um, for, for you know posterity <laughs> <laughs> awesome but uh, do you have any, um, have any software yeah, no, it, or anything that might not have seen the light um, today? I've, I've got um, I've got a box full of cartridges. Some of them are betas. I think there's a uh, um, oh, the robot uh, maze game that right now I'm drawing a blank on. It. I've got an early one of those. I think that actually did see the light of day. Um, but um, yeah, we, we we did a lot of trading you know, with our friends at Activision and. That's, that's the other thing is, is the interesting back then is, is that we would joke that Silicon Valley was growing so fast. Atari and all the, the outside related companies were growing so fast that if you didn't like what you did, you could walk out the front door, walk across the street, and there'd be an office waiting for you. Hmm. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like that. People were, were, were taken off to new startups left and right. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just, um, never since have I seen a company and, and probably rightly so spend the kind of money that, uh, Atari budgets could spend at the time, uh, for the parties and the, the, the trade shows and the conferences and, um, you know, probably the only thing is, you know, I could equate to a modern equivalent, of course, is Apple building the new spaceship building. They're putting obviously a lot of money into that, but, mm -hmm. but internally just with departmental stuff, um, um, you know, we, in fact, when I was at Apple, uh, in the nineties, there was a similar scenario of having lots of money to spend on, on t-shirts and jackets and, you know, lots of lots of tchotchkes that you could give away to department employees for the projects you worked on. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of that in the Atari days as well. I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the product managing the uh, individual um, computers that you worked on. You said you worked on the 1200 XL. Um, I, I mean, that there's some, some great things about that machine, like the keyboard, but generally I think at the time it was seen to be a failure because it wasn't quite compatible and and uh, it was expensive compared to the 4800. So, I mean, as product manager before and after, how did how did it, how did that product seem? Well, it, it, yeah, it just, I, I tell you that really the, the whole process was heavily engineering driven. Um, my role uh, was, was less 
I wasn't driving any shit by any means. I was in a, a supporting, documenting, um, kind of helping keeping the time tracks going um, from, from the market. I was in the marketing department uh, kind of thing, but, but really all of the, the uh, energies and, and uh, design decisions and, and future things were, were happening um, moreover on the engineering side, there was a lot more control over there than what you might see today. Um, so there were, there was discussions of things about, you know, should it be two, two game ports or four still? And, and, you know, the keyboard being different and, and, um, uh, whether or not we're going to, um, you know, add this module in or that, or is this, are we going to keep, uh, the video out the same, you know, things like that, that we went back and forth on, but, the grand scheme of things, um, um, uh, it was it was highly engineering driven. Um, so uh, I also have to kind of beg a little bit of uh, forgiveness on you in my my memory of that time. Um, uh, let's say it's quickly; it's been a long time. So, um, but but my remembrance of it, while uh, my department, our departments were involved in in, in big picture stuff, a lot of the realities were, were driven by what could be put in place into it in a given period of time. And those were, were heavily controlled, uh, on the, on the engineering side, uh, what they, what they could feel they could pull off. I know that there were, um, uh, discussions on, you know, what, uh, uh versions of, of the chips that could go in there and, and whether or not they were going to get this new generation in in time or not. And a lot of back and forth. So there there were prototypes made with stuff that could never have been delivered in the real thing. Uh, so there was, there was a lot of, a lot of prototyping going on, a lot of versions that I get to, you know, be kind of a beta tester for and that they, they put these things together and sent it over to me and I'd be testing with apps and, and programs. I mean, I also got involved in the, there was a, a third party module that, that brought CPM. Uh, to Atari and the AT- uh, ATR 8000. Yeah, the ATR 8000. So I interfaced with those guys building that box uh, with uh, you know trying to get that stuff to work and see if there was a way that we could partner with them. It was it was a nice thing and and, and it would work in some cases and not in other cases. And um, what they of course wanted was that you know we would get more heavily involved in helping push that, but. Uh, um, it really was a, kind of an arm's length thing. So, but but I had one of the few ATR eight thousands uh, in in the company. Well, I, I was very lucky to be able to meet a lot of people, work with a lot of different people, even on short term things. You know, getting to meet Alan Kay and and you know his you know thinking you know hearing him talk in a room about things is just like wow. You sit back and go. Man, that's something else. Um, and uh, um, also, um, there was uh, early uh, um, uh, prototyping and voice recognition stuff. Um, there was a lot of interesting prototyping and things going on. You know, there was the whole let's see if we can build a, a CPM, you know, motherboard back end to put in S100 cards. You know, there was the thought of that. There was a you know number of prototypes for that build. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, it was just just a lot going on and a lot. The Corvus drive system, you know, uh, we had one of those in. We were, we were using uh, actually, you know, in the offices as a, as a production tool, playing with uh, um, uh, data storage and then backup on the Corvus tape system. Um, uh, what else? Wow, there's just there's just a lot that went on. The the um, you know, my buddy, this is kind of a side note, my, my buddy who, who I was working with for years and got him hired and he went on to, to run the training department, he, uh, he met his wife, his future wife. They're still married to this day, um, um, uh, but uh, she was uh, a, a sales rep uh, for, for DK uh, Marketing uh, on the East Bay, and uh, she came in to get trained, and, and uh, he got smitten that first day seeing her in the class. So. Nice. <laughs> So, Did you yeah, tell me his name um, What's his name? Uh, Tom, no, Tom Hudson. Oh, okay. um, and, yeah, Tom Hudson was, uh, uh, and he headed the training department later on. Um, 
he he got hired by and he's Alex Karras, I think. Does that name even ring any bell to you? Say the name again. Alex Karras or something Karras. No, I don't know that name. Is this the Tom yeah, Hudson that ended he, up at, at Analog? Um, no, okay. no. Um, um, Tom Hudson. He's um, uh, after after Atari, he went to work for Apple, um, and after Apple, he came to work with me. We re- reunited again in a company that I started up uh, called Merlin Media that uh, did web development and kiosks and, and uh, point of purchase terminals. And again, in, you know, stuff we learned from uh, what we did uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at Atari and the Eric system and what we did with Weimart in later years. Um, so, uh, um, but yeah, Tom's an author now. He, he writes uh, um, fan fiction for Tom Swift novels and, and other things. So, uh, so yeah, you can look him up on Amazon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he was he was a trainer. He could give he could give you a lot of stories as well. He's he's definitely a much better storyteller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Being an author and a writer. Um, but uh, yeah, so Tom, Tom was there in the uh, same same time window that, that I was. I was going to ask if you're still in Medford or are you in Oregon? Where are you based now? No, no, I'm I'm in Southern California. Uh, never thought I'd be in Southern California, but I'm. Uh, I'm about an hour north of LA in Camarillo, just just shy of Ventura, uh, and I'm uh, I'm now uh, a VP of customer success for uh, Omni Update, and we do uh, web content management software for colleges and universities nationwide. But uh, yeah, so uh, but yeah, the the, the Atari days, uh, you know, Raymond Kassar would drive up in his limo. Well, he wouldn't drive. He was chauffeured in his limo coming down from San Francisco. I can remember those uh, those days. Uh, uh, going and playing in the company arcade room. Uh, um, going down and, and talking to the team, working on the Atari telephone projects and other things, you know, that never saw the light of day. Uh, um, and uh, the Jaguar project and... Um, um, I had buddies over in uh, Eric Rothberg, uh, who did Battlezone. I had a bunch of buddies over in the, in the coin op side. Um, yeah, but uh, it was always fun going over and visiting them. That, that was that was fun. There was real engineering going on over there, building it from scratch. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, most of my time was at 11, was it 1196 Borregas Avenue in San Diego. And then later we moved down to Plumeria, 60 Plumeria. Man, I'm surprised I'm even remembering these addresses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can let those brain cells uh, free to do something else. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was fun. It was fast paced. Uh, it was uh, it was hard work, but it was exciting. Um, I just uh, I enjoyed every minute. Ah, another another thing is. Uh, the, um, um, Roger Battisher somehow got connected with the, the Plato terminal system. So we had a Plato terminal installed and I was responsible for getting to know that and seeing how, is there any way that we could get, you know, something defined to get a Plato terminal running on an Atari. So it, and there was a lot of weird projects. That was also something that, that was out in that field. And he, he ended up also having a, a Plato terminal installed at his home. And so I chat with his son at times, you know, and just getting in and, 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 and playing around with that. So there was just a lot of experimentation. Um, you were ultimately I successful remember, there because they, they came out with the Plato cartridge for the Atari. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't involved in that. And I was just involved with, with the, the terminal itself and learning how to use it and passing that knowledge along and documenting what it was doing. Um, and Steve Gibson uh, with his light pen, uh, involved with working with him on, on getting that working. Uh, uh, he's now a security consultant. Uh, I see him, he's got his own podcast, or not podcast, video cast that he, he does, but uh, very, very smart guy that we, we brought in and, and uh, marketed his product. Uh, well, the Atari light pen was Steve Gibson's uh, design. Yeah, it must have been exciting exciting to be part of just all of that experimentation and new tech and Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then 
And then all of a sudden, you know, one day they say, oh, hey, guess what? Michael Jackson's coming through to take a visit. Hmm. <laughs> so, so I got to meet Michael Jackson for all the 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was in it. But, but definitely a yeah, big highlight was, was, was uh, spending time with Alan Alda. That was a lot of fun. So yeah, a, a lot, a lot of different things going on at different times. And, and looking back on it now, man, we we crammed a lot of stuff in the, the short three years I was there. I'm just so sorry it, it ended the way it did. It just you know the whole you know games market crash, and that's where all the money was. All the money was in the coin up and 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 the consumer. You know, we in the game side, and and when when the uh, the home games market dried up, you know, we had what ninety six percent saturation for all the televisions owned you know, homes that had televisions also had Atari 2600s. Wow. Uh, you know, where are we going to go from there? You know, and then, and then the, the, the 5200 and, and, you know, all the stuff after that, it just, they just thought it would never end. And then, you know, that dang ET cartridge that failed and, you know, other things failed and it was fun watching the latest news. What was a few months back where they went and did the dig down in, what was it Arizona or, or, or New Mexico? Mexico. Yeah. New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going, yes, <laughs> it did happen. <laughs> I know it happened. And there's proof. <laughs> I know it happened. <laughs> we knew it from inside that it was happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, to to you know finally go see. I told you, <laughs> this <laughs> proof. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was uh, something I don't expect we'll ever see again. Money spent the way it was spent, as big it was spent. Budgets just out of, out of this world. Uh, and 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 uh, I mean, and you know, again, you know, it was it was um, my first you know, corporate job. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd been in retail for two years, three years prior to that. Um, and so just to, I just was a sponge, just absorbed and absorbed and absorbed as much as I could. I learned a lot while I was there. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, I remember, um, the, uh, what was it? Uh, not Lego, uh, not Turtle. It's just some programming language. Logo. Yes, yes, that was fun. Um, seeing that that being built out and, and uh, working with John Powers, he that was his baby. Hmm. Um, a lot of interesting stuff happened back then. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. If you could send a message to the people who uh, use those Atari computers that you product managed, and you can right now, what would you tell them? Um, thank you. You know, um, uh, you know, if people who didn't buy them, we wouldn't have jobs. So, um, and and those who are still to this day interested in Atari lore uh, and Atari from that time frame, uh, I salute you. I mean, I I remember it very fondly. Uh, it was a great time for me, and it was a great impression on building my career. And so, um, you know, uh, sure, there were problems, but, man, I had a great time, and, and I loved it. And, and having that opportunity to work there and, and learn the things I did, I got nothing but take things. It gave me a love for traveling. I was able to do a lot of traveling in my career uh, over the years since then, and, and having that first trip uh um, being given the responsibility to to show off the 600 and 800 XL products in Europe uh, on a day and a half notice <laughs> um, was uh, um, was a real experience, and and uh, so I, I look back at all that time very fondly. Nice, I think that's what I need. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library 
with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.